This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, children of God, especially the saints of Dunton Presbyterian, Hollis Presbyterian, the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans, Springfield Gardens Presbyterian Church, Troop Memorial Presbyterian Church, and Westminster Presbyterian Church in Cedar Manor. We are in one spirit and in one Lord. In the Holy Spirit we have gathered today together to worship and praise God. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of preparation, 
Theophany. When, 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 when those three people were there, and he, he asked you, God, he said, will you destroy the few righteous for the many wicked? Father, we ask, Lord, that you might protect your righteous during this time. We ask, God, that you might look after us, Father, during this time, because times are very serious. But, Father, we pray today also for the sick and shutting of our churches. There are so many people that are hurting right now, oh God. There's Elder Monica Davis and Sister Inez Green. We're talking about Sister Mary and Lindsay and Richard and Julie Reed and their babies, Logan and Phoenix. We pray for them, God. We pray, Father, that you might be able to intercede for them and help them where they are right now, oh God. We're praying today for Elder Edda Henry and family, and Brother Richard Braithwaite and family, and Sister Tamara Ford and her family. Touch them right now, oh God. We don't know what it is that they're going through, but Father, I know that you know what they're going through because somebody said that they are in need of prayer. So we ask for you to touch on them, oh God. We're praying today for Sister Irene Johnson Boyd and Elder Cole Smith and Sister Edwin Davis. Touch them right now, oh God. They need your help. These people are sick and shuddered, Lord, and they are depending upon you. And Father, today we pray for our Reverend Des Brown. Touch him right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Des, he, he's a wonderful preacher, Lord, and he needs you right now, oh God. But now he has fallen ill. So, Father, we pray for him. We pray, God, that you'll lift him up and, and help him right now in his circumstances, Lord. We pray for the Owens family and, and for the entire Dunn family, Lord, that you might help them right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Today we're praying for Edna James. Edna James needs you, God. Edna James has just gone back into the hospital, Lord. She has problems with her kidneys. We ask for your touch on her. We pray for my brother Davis. Today, God, we pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And let us not forget about Barbara McGriff. Barbara McGriff, who was your miracle child, the person who you saved, oh God, the person who you gave a brand new kidney, Lord. We ask, Father, that you might touch her during this time, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, Lord, for the vitality of the congregations. These are strange times, Lord, times that we're not used to. So we ask, God, that you might have your way with us, that you might touch us, Lord, in a special way. That you might help us, Father, during this time, Lord, when we can't come together as a church family anymore. So we ask, God, that you might touch these airwaves. And that your word might go out, Father, so that it might touch everybody, so that it might encourage, oh God. Bless us, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God's holy word comes to us from the Old Testament, Psalms 25, verse 5. reading is, lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, on you I will wait all day. Here is the reading. And the New Testament reading comes from 1 John 5 verses 13 to 15 and then 19. The word of the Lord teaches us. In 1 John, the 5th chapter, verses 13, 14, and 15. Hear the word of the Lord. These things have I written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, 
If we ask anything according to His will, God hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of Him. Yes. And we thank God for His presence and His blessings. We thank God for His love. We thank God for the Word of God as we bring today and may saturate your heart with the Lord God who is always with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank God for the Word. Amen. 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 A hymn will be rendered by Minister Hale Thompson. The splendor of the King Westminster Presbyterian Church in Siena Manor and the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans. I'd like to share a word this wonderful Sunday morning. A word that comes to console us in times like these. God's presence in troubled times. God's presence in troubled times. We live in troubled times. Everywhere we turn, turn on the news. Social media, the newspapers, everyone is talking about COVID-19. Fears arising all around the world. People of all ages are afraid and anxious, weighed down with worry and not sure what to do next. Schools are closed. Travel is banned to certain places. Events canceled. Churches are closed and most people are closing their doors out of fear and, and engaging in others. And we see that social distancing is upon us. We must be six feet away from individuals. Oh, God have mercy. People throughout the world are motivated by fear and uncertainty. Yes. First John provides us with three truths of which we can be certain of God's presence in times of trouble, in times of pain, in times of uncertainty. God's presence is our promise. God's presence 
is our promise. John begins by saying, I've written this to you who believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that you may know you have eternal life. John wrote the word of God, that we might know that we have eternal life. As believers in these troubled times, we know that there's accepting Jesus Christ. When we accept Christ, we have that eternal life. This is God's promise. We can count on God's promise. Yes. Listen to just a few of the verses in the Bible that assures us mm. of eternal life. We read, amen, in John 3.36, He who believes in the Son has eternal life. Yes. In John 5.24, the Bible tells us, Truly I say to you, he who hears my words, believes him who has sent me, has eternal life. Mm -hmm. And we read in Romans 6.23, Truly I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. We thank God for the word of the Lord that tells us on the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. God's presence is always with us in times of confusion, in times of fear, in times of uncertainty. We can rest assured on God's word, the wonderful word that you learn even as a child. For God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Jesus Christ might be saved. In the next verse, John says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Thank God God hears yes. us. His ears are open to your cry yes. and to my cry. To family members who are afraid to go and visit family members. To those that we've worked with for years who cannot talk and touch and shake hands. But the Lord God hears our cry. And we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that he will be there when we ask him. That's 1 John 5, 14 mm -hmm. through 50. We thank God for the word. God's presence is with us always. And he encourages us. In Matthew 7 and 7, I love this name. And the word says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, knock, knock. And the doors shall be open unto you. Thank you, God. Remember, God's presence mm -hmm. is your promise. Yes. God's presence is your promise. So as you go in your home, as you call on the phone, as you have loved ones come by, know that God's presence, His presence is our promise. And I can say amen. Secondly, God's presence in our prayers. The second truth of which we can be assured is that God hears and answers our prayers. Thank you, God. And I'm going to say amen. amen. I know how many prayers He's answered for me and for you and for you and for you yes. and for your family. No more than ever, Christians ought to be responding not in panic and fearfulness. Let's not be panic stricken. Let's not let fear grip us. But let us find ourselves in prayer. Amen. Prayer is the key to heaven and faith unlocks the door. Yes. So family, come together and pray together. Mm -hmm. Come together and seek God's face together because God answers prayers. We have so much to pray about. We need to pray for the medical leaders and the doctors. We need to pray for the decisions makers. We need to pray for the government around the world, the governments around the world. We need to pray for the people who are already afflicted by the virus. We need to pray for those who are especially vulnerable, yes. the elderly, those who are already sick or have immune deficiencies. In uncertain times, it's so essential that Christians choose prayer over panic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to repeat that. As Christians, we must choose prayer over panic. 
Sweet, sweet Jesus. Mm. We pray that you will touch your people. Thank you, Jesus. We'll come together in prayer. And when we pray, we can be certain that God is listening. We know that he hears us. There are four things, four different answers to prayer, and I'd like to share them. Amen. In the request, or if the request is wrong, God says no. If the request is wrong, God may say slow. If the request is wrong, God might say grow. But if the request is right, the timing is right, you are right. God says go. Mm -hmm. He wants you to go. You might not be able to go to all the world, but there's some place you can go to take the word and the love of God. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15, the word says that my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. If my people, we are his people. Yes. If we pray, if we fight, mm -hmm. if we trust God, God is going to heal the land. And he healed so many other situations and pandemics throughout history. It was God who came and healed the land. Mm -hmm. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Thank God for our churches. We're not in our church, but our church people. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to lift up the Lord's name. Yes. Dunton, Hollis, mm. and the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans, and Springfield Gardens, yes. and, Crew, and Westminster. Yes. God's called us to be prayer warriors yes. in times like these. Amen. So how do we make sure that everything is right? Well, John answers that question for us. In 1 John 5.14, and this is the confidence that we have in God, that if we ask anything, According to God, will he hears us. If we ask anything according to God's will, he hears us. So let's take time to pray. Let's take time to seek him. Let's take time to know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we might ask our thing according to the power of God that is within us. Pray in line with God. You will be confident that you pray in line with God, the Lord will make a way. Prayer is not about getting my will done in heaven. It's getting God's will done on earth. Yes. Prayer is not about getting my will in heaven. It's about getting God's will done on earth. God always says yes when our requests are in line with God's desire. So when we can be certain about our promises, we can be certain about our prayers, and knowing that God answers prayers. So church family, friends, those looking at this particular session, take time to pray. Take time to seek the Lord. Know that God sees and He hears and He loves is a healing God. So point number three, God's presence as our protector. The third reality that when we are certain about our protection, certain about that protection, John goes on to say in the word of God, hallelujah. We put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That we can look to the hills and let come of our help. And all our help comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank God that we can put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We put our faith in Christ. He washes away all our sins, past and present and future. No matter what the temptation or the trials or the test comes our way, we know that for certain that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly mm. all that we might ask yes, or think. Did. So we can be certain about our promise, about our prayers, about our protector. First John tells us, we know that we are children of God. And the world around us is under the control of the enemy. But First John 5, 19 instructs us, 
You hold a precious position, a priceless place in God's eternal family. Isn't that incredible? Yes. God wants a family. Mm. And he created you and he created me. Praise so you. give God glory, praise, and honor. But he always with us. He loves us to the other ones. The Bible is the story of God's building a family who will love him, honor him, serve him, seek him forever. The Bible says, because of his love, God has already decided to make us his own children through Jesus Christ. We thank God for that. And when we place our faith in Jesus, God becomes our Father. He becomes our Father. We become his children. Other believers become our brothers and sisters. And the church becomes our spiritual family. Christians aren't just called to believe. We are called to belong mm. to God. Not just to believe, but belong to God and to each other. We are called to serve. Ask God for greater ways for continue to serve in these trying times. We are created for communion and community. Being a servant of Christ, being a part of God's family, is all about togetherness. Yes, it is. Walking together talking together, sharing together. Maybe we can't do too much touching together, but we keep loving together. Amen. Loving God, loving each other, crying together, dreaming together. In fact, the Bible says that Christians are put together, joined together, built together, remembers of togetherness, heirs together, fitted together, held together, and we caught up together to be God in the air. There are lots of togetherness in God's family. I think especially at times like these, when you're supposed to be isolated from others, we ask God to bring us together. Yes. When we belong to God's family, mm. you're never ever alone. So each one reach out in some way to those you love and your friends. We are living in uncertain times. But 1 John 5 tells us in the Word of God, He tells us that we are to cast our cares upon the Lord. The Bible gives us some truth that has stood the test of time. We can know for certain. We can be certain that God's promises, our prayers, our protections, will go forward. You can know that you're a child of God. Members, friends, those seeing this particular service, you're a child of the Most High. Mm. And you can know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, yes. and Savior, wants to save you. He loves you so. He cares for you so. In 1 Peter 5 and 7, it says, cast all your anxiety, all your cares, upon God because he cares, he cares, he cares for you. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel worried, when you're all anxious, remember these three certainties. Take refuge in them. Number one, God's presence is our promise. Number two, God's presence in our prayers. And number three, God's presence is our protector. Be not dismayed, but ere be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. Yes. He will, he will take care of you. Yes, he will. God will take care of you. Through days of toil, when hearts fail, God will take care of you. 
when dangers, fears, your path ascends. God will take care of you. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Let us pray. Amen. Almighty and loving God, we thank you for this time that we can come and share with you. Almighty God, we know that you're a caretaker. We thank you, God, for how you've taken care of us through the years. You've blessed us. So help us to cast our cares upon you. Those who are hurting this morning, we know you're taking care of them. Those, oh God, who are fearful of this terrible, terrible virus, take care of them. Oh God, for those young people who find themselves so gripped in home and not being able to move, take care of them, Lord. Mm. And the homeless, Almighty oh God, we pray for the homeless men and women who find themselves lost in the streets, oh God, not having a place to sleep, God. We know you take care of them. Mm. So we cast our cares upon you. We deliver our families to you. We love you, God. Yes, Lord. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We adore you, God. Yes, Lord. And we know that this too shall pass. Yes. Yes. Bless us. Bless us, Lord. Direct us. Yes, Lord. Guide us. Yes, God. And keep us, God, yes, Lord. in your perfect peace yes, Lord. as we keep our minds stayed mm -hmm. on you. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I'd like for you all to pray with me the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me. In the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, thy cup will run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, God, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, God, for goodness and mercy. Our angels, all day, all night, our individual angels, watching over us. Thank we you. thank you and we bless you and we praise you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And now, I'd like you to remember our friends, your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts to your respective churches. In your church, you might know of a way that you can get your offering to the church. Uh, whether by online giving or so on. But remember this. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus who said it is more better to give than to receive. Freely you have received, freely give. Let your light so shine that others may see your good works and worship God who is in heaven. Every per person according to the purposes in their heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You're also reminded to stay connected by the prayer line, which is every Monday to Friday from 12.30 a.m. And the telephone number, I'm going to remind you again, is 712-770-0. Five five zero five. The access code is two nine two eighty two five four nine. And I'm going to repeat that. The telephone number is seven one two seven seven zero five five zero five. The access code being two nine two eight two two five four nine. You can also text your prayer requests or praise reports to three four seven four nine four zero eight nine seven. The benediction and closing hymn. The closing hymn will be Guide My Feet after the benediction. Let us pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're thankful, God, for this time that we have. 
served you. We thank for God for the sermon that we heard. And now to him that's able to keep us from falling and able to present us faultless in the presence of his glory. The Almighty God, our Savior, the glory, majesty, power, and dominion, both now and forevermore. Beloved, wherever you are, if you agree, just say, Amen. Amen. You got the whole